welcome to the Beyond Sugar Freedom podcast. I'm your host, Danielle Dame, holistic nutrition coach and speaker. Let's dive in. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode here on the Beyond Sugar Freedom podcast. I'm your host, Danielle Dame, sugar freedom expert and somatic embodiment coach. And today we have another doozy for you, something that has been very present for me lately and a huge piece in my inner healing journey that has made a major shift and major impact on my addictive patterns with sugar. And I see this in the world. I see this with every one of my clients that I work with. And we're going to be having a deep dive discussion today about a few things, about letting go of control, about why we feel the need to control. We're going to talk about learning to trust yourself. And we're also going to be talking about this through the lens of the masculine and feminine energies that exist in all of us. And this is all going to make sense in a hot minute as we dive into today's episode. But before we do, a huge shout out to each and every one of you who have been listening along to this show and this podcast since its inception, um, or even maybe you're new to the show. And I want to shout out to you as well and just sense so much gratitude. I could not keep putting out episodes every week without your feedback, without your amazing comments and without those wonderful five-star reviews. So if you haven't taken a minute to do that yet and you want to find a way to give back to me and to help me stay encouraged to be producing these incredible episodes every week, please take a minute to leave a five-star review on Apple, on Spotify. And that just really, really deeply means the world to me. So, so much going on. I, at the time of recording this actual episode, and you know, I love li- giving a little bit of a personal behind the scenes update before getting into a lot of these episodes. And uh, if you listened to last week's show, you would have known that we have officially adopted two beautiful little kittens that will be my forever babies. And we have been just enjoying the, the time and moments of getting to know them, getting to see their personalities develop. Develop. They're just nine weeks old, nine and a half weeks right now. And as I'm recording this, I can hear one of them under the desk playing in my garbage basket, <laughs> which is apparently their favorite toy. So you might see them if you're watching this on YouTube, running around behind me on the couch. And it has just been such a joy to have animals in the house again. And I personally believe that animals and babies and young children as well are some of the most connected creatures to their true selves, to consciousness and true knowledge. And I always look to to animals and infants and young human beings even for guidance and for teachings. They're just such great teachers, aren't they? Our pet, anybody who has pets, you know, right? Or children, you know that these are our best teachers. And I'm excited to see what these two little ones teach me. They still don't have names, so still open to name suggestions for those who've been following along with that saga. We're not in a rush. Uh, nothing's really come to us yet, and we're not going to force it. We're going to allow it to come to us. And that's actually one of the things that we're really talking about today is force versus flow and allowing. And that'll make sense in just a minute. Um, I also wanted to share another fun update yesterday at the time of recording this, it was yesterday. I just wrapped up our integration post retreat call with the women who joined the first ever sugar freedom embodiment retreat in July. And it was so incredible to come together and to hear from, from each of the women. Many of them shared specifically that they have not had any cravings or any binges, and they've just felt more connected to their body, more connected to themselves, finally speaking their truth, having some tough conversations with loved ones and husbands, and really starting to set those healthy boundaries and just so incredible to see them taking everything that they learned while we were together in person for five days and actually starting to apply it in their everyday life and continuing to learn, right? When we get in back into the arena of everyday life after such an intensive healing experience that we created at the retreat, it really is where the real work starts to, to kick in. And I'm so just 
shell- shouting from the rooftops and celebrating these women that uh, were sharing with me yesterday how far they've come. And it's been two weeks since the retreat. And it's just incredible to see the shifts that are lasting for them. And being the first retreat, you know, that was my hope. That was what I was curating and, and cultivating with the healing that we were doing. And just to see it manifesting is absolutely just such a pleasure and such a gift. And Oh, just makes me so, so excited and even more excited for the next retreat. So I know many were uh, wondering if I was going to be doing this again. The timing didn't work this time around. And the answer is 100% yes. I know without a shadow of a doubt that this is my purpose. This is my calling to bring women together in this type of vulnerable, raw, safe, and trusting space in order to heal their root causes of their addictive patterns with sugar, with food and reconnect to themselves. And I will absolutely be taking everything that I learned from this first retreat and bringing it into making the second one even more powerful, even more incredible. I don't have a date for the second one at this point, but it will absolutely be in the coming months and definitely within the next year. So if you want to know and be the first to actually know about the next retreat, be sure to come and get your name on the wait list. I'm going to be letting everyone know who's on the wait list. Um, they kind of get a behind the scenes and a first chance to register as well for the next retreat. So come and get your name on that list. The link will be below in the show notes, uh, wherever you're listening to or watching this, you can find that and just get your name on that wait list and uh, stay tuned. Stay tuned as I work behind the scenes on, on finalizing the round two of the incredible retreat. So speaking of the retreat, this is really a perfect segue into what I wanted to share with all of you today, because as I was thinking about the topic that I wanted to bring onto the show for all of you this week, there were a lot of things kind of floating around for me. And to be honest, I I went out on my morning run this morning and really let that without music, I really let myself sink into what what do I feel is most needed to be shared today? And that is a wildly new practice for me. And we're going to actually be talking a lot about this, this concept of the masculine energy and the feminine energy and what this has to do with sugar, what this has to do with our struggles with food. Trust me, it does. And it's a really big, important piece for each and every one of you to reflect on. So what I see here, right, is what do we want? What do you want? right? How do you want to feel every day? And if you're like the hundreds of women that I've worked with over the last seven years, it's probably things like ease, right? Peace, freedom, happiness, joy, right? Having that sense of ease and flow with food, right? Not having sugar control you anymore and the cravings pulling you into the dark depths of the binge patterns, right? This is universally what we want and desire as humans is the happiness and lightness and freedom and, and just peace. Right. And at the same time, we live in a world that contradicts all of that. And this is where I want to have a little bit of a discussion. We're not going to get into too much of a rabbit hole because it's a big rabbit hole, but the truth and the matter of fact is that we live in a patriarchal society. And what that means is our society structures the written and unwritten rules, the way that we're meant to do things and not do certain things has been developed by men, right? And this is from decades and centuries ago, right? Men ruled the planet, right? And they created this structure, the governments, the food industry, uh, not to say women weren't a huge part in some of those things, but really the structures that we have built in our world are based off of a very masculine dynamic. Now, for those who are very new to these terms, when I'm talking about masculine and feminine, I'm talking about energies that exist in all of us. I'm not talking about sex and gender. So masculine energy and feminine energy exist just like yin and yang, right? In our world. This is a law of the universe really. And this exists in everything in nature, right? We have masculine and feminine plants, right? We have, um, animals, right? (laughs) Have um, masculine and feminine and every one of us also have both of these energies in us. So just because I'm a woman doesn't mean I only have feminine energy. It has nothing to do with gender and sex and everything to do with the polarity and the black and white and the yin and yang that exists in our universe. 
Now, masculine energy does tend to be uh, associated with men more often because they tend to be more comfortable in their masculine energy side of things. But what is happening in our world is we've become so far unbalanced, right? And our world has really celebrated and praised and really put masculine energy, and I'm going to explain what this, how this shows up, on a pedestal and has really started downgrading the gifts and benefits of being in our feminine energy. So there's this massive disconnect, imbalance that is in all of us. And I know for me, that showed up in a lot of ways growing up as really trying to fit in in this masculine patriarchy society, trying to reach the, those definitions of success, trying to be good at math, good at structure, um, and, and really planning. So these are some of the masculine pieces are really like structure, rigidity, lists, spreadsheets, um, setting goals, um, taking action is a very masculine energy. It's getting shit done, right? And we need that energy. But by the way, we need both of these energies. But we've, we've, what has happened in the world is we've gotten too far sucked into just being in our masculine. So all the time we are producing, having to get things done, working on to-do lists, right? Uh, trying to achieve promotions at work, working harder, working longer, right? This is all very convenient for the industrial revolution and for businesses who need workers to be committed, to be focused, to be goal oriented. These are all very uh, strict, rigid, action focused energies. And that's, we can see how important that is in our world, right? We, we need that. We need, we need times when we get things done, right? And we actually have structure, right? This is, 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 is structure. So even like a meal plan, right? Is, is a very masculine activity, right? Is setting a meal plan, writing it down. Like those things are very um, structure oriented. Having a routine is very masculine and that's okay. That's great. We need some of those things, but we cannot forget the feminine. So when we look at the other side of this coin, the feminine energies are soft they're emotional, right? They're flow, peace, ease, a lot of those things that we're craving, right? Those things that I just mentioned earlier, I know a lot of you resonated with that we're really looking for, right? It's more flow, more happiness, more ease, more flexibility, more softness, nurturing, comforting. We can think of it as sort of like a mothering energy, right? And when we are operating on our feminine energy, we are flowing, right? Some of us have experienced this maybe on vacation, right? When you have a day where there's nothing planned and you get to just flow with the day, that's being in tune very much with feminine energy, right? Or if you don't have a meal plan, like for example, here's a, here's a food related example. I don't really meal plan. I have such an internal system of, of an ease in the kitchen of cooking what I want when I want and knowing that I'll always have food available. I, I have really gotten to a point where I don't need a rigid structure of a meal plan anymore and I can easily flow and produce food. It's kind of an inner knowing now. I know when there's nothing in the fridge, something needs to be made and I can flow with it. And I don't follow recipes. So that's another feminine you know, a creative, another way to think of this too, is whenever you're doing something creative, you're in your feminine energy. And again, every single human, whether you're a man, woman, or anything else has both of these energies. And it's a really powerful tool for you to start assessing, are you spending too much time in your masculine or even too much time in your feminine? There are a lot of creative people, right? Like we can think of artists and painters and people who are very much living in their feminine that never get anything done, right? They don't pay their bills on time. They don't show up for work on time, right? So it goes both ways. But for the most part, and I know all the women that I've worked with and myself, we have been trained and taught by the patriarchy to prioritize being in our masculine all the time. So that's obviously you can do more research on this. This is my interpretation of the masculine and feminine. There's a lot more to it, but I'm just giving you the quick notes of it now. 
And this imbalance is what I'm posing to all of you here, proposing that this imbalance is what has left us burnt out, absolutely exhausted, stressed all the time, forcing and being at war with our bodies and with food, using food and sugar to cope, to give us this false sense of peace and happiness and joy. And it's damaging our lack of like self-love for ourselves, our self-confidence, because we're going against, we're, we're out of balance. We're completely out of energetic balance. And our world does not support us to be in energetic balance. And this is where if any of you are, you know, are starting to get off of sugar, starting to choose this new way of being and eating, you're already hopefully willing to be a little bit of the black sheep because we kind of have to be the black sheep in a society that is sick and dying if we want to not subscribe to that model anymore. So actually reclaiming your feminine and reclaiming this balance of the masculine and feminine is, is and can be extremely difficult in a world that doesn't support that, right? It doesn't support you calling in sick because you're feeling off today, right? It, it really doesn't support, let alone the simple like physical feminine aspects of our cycle every month as women, right? We just don't get supported with that. It's looked down upon. Anything that is feminine energy is looked down upon. Emotions are a really great example of this, right? We're taught not to cry, to suck it up, be tough, right? That our emotions are somehow weak when actually they are our power and our strength. And this is for men and women, by the way, right? But emotions are very soft and gentle. Our creativity, right, is often stifled right? We're taught in childhood to, you know, focus on math and history and science, but forget creativity, right? Forget cooking and being out in nature and gardening. And we're, we're needing to reclaim these things. And this is like, I've mentioned a very personal journey for me in my healing with food and my own inner healing process. I realized pretty early on that my need to control, which we're going to talk about in a minute, was very much me being stuck in my masculine and me trying to keep up with the Joneses, right? Trying to reach that, that arbitrary level of success, right? Reach that, that goal that society has told me I should go after to really be rigid, right? And have the, the structure in my life that every time that wouldn't work, I would guilt myself. I would shame myself because it doesn't, by the way. And we're going to talk about this in a minute. We cannot just live in our masculine. We will absolutely burn ourselves out. And I know many of you listening to this may already be in burnout, right? Or at least resonate with feeling really stressed every day, right? And feeling the opposite of peace and ease in your body and in your life. And my journey has really when I started realizing this about this imbalance for me has been beginning to bring back the feminine for me because my, one of my biggest eating triggers was planning things and them not going according to plan and then completely falling apart at the seams because it meant I was a failure. It meant nothing was working out for me. It meant life was going to fall apart. And whether that was planning a trip, right. And things came up and I would be triggered right? When nothing went according to plan, right? I still, I, I still remember the first time I heard that saying, right? Make a plan and God laughs or something like that, right? Because plans never go according to what you want them to. And, you know, and even um, events and structures. I mean, I just re went through a retreat process of this where definitely not everything went according to plan. And when we can allow for some feminine energy in that we can take away the trigger, right? We can go, Oh, okay. Allowing the flow, right? Having a plan is good, but then allowing the flow at the same time. And this has been a huge journey for me. And I've been working at this, just being aware of this and consciously practicing, bringing in more space to be in my feminine, whether that's cooking without a recipe or having days without, without plans where I can flow, right? Or when things don't go according to plan, practicing my mantras, right? Of everything's okay. Maybe this will actually work out better than what I thought it would. And really just leaning into the ebbs and flows of life. Now, before I start talking about what this has to do with control, because I know every single one of my clients struggles with control, and I'm willing to bet a lot of you listening to this do as well, 
I really want to just mention that this journey of balancing the masculine and feminine takes time, right? And this is really an interesting dynamic. One of the thoughts, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to pose this to all of you as just a thought, a thought to consider because, and I think I actually mentioned this in the last episode, but it really fits perfectly in here as well, because as we're talking about being really rigid, being in our masculine, being really um, trying to control things, right? Many of us are taking the same approach with sugar. We're taking this exact same approach where we're willpowering ourselves, we're struggling through 30 days sugar-free, we're forcing, we're planning, we're scheduling our day to a T to make sure that we don't eat any sugar, and we're avoiding it altogether, you know, which I know is a huge debate out there, the abstinence versus moderation debate with sugar. And this real deep structure of attempting to stay off of sugar I think is actually one of the reasons that most women completely fail and completely fall off the wagon with sugar. Because if we don't also honor our innate need to be in our feminine energy, at some point, our actions, our body, our subconscious, our, our, our physical being, our spirit will force us to do that. So I think the rigidity, this forced rigidity is actually too much. And it's like being upset and angry and never letting it out, right? And one day down the line, it just explodes and you start yelling at everybody, right? We've all had that experience where we're like keeping it together and then all of a sudden it explodes at the worst moment, right? At somebody who you're not even mad at. So I think it's the same with sugar, right? We're trying so hard to just be rigid and masculine in our approach to breaking free from sugar. And we've completely forgotten this very important human need as the feminine energy that exists in all of us. And when we're so out of balance with it, it's like an elastic band. Eventually it'll snap back. And if we're not actually honoring that flow, that snap back is actually going to be it's going to hurt, right? That elastic band is going to hurt and it's going to look more like massive binges or, you know, eating until you feel so sick as opposed to having a more flowing attitude, right? And this is, you know, we can see this in, uh, in setting goals as well, right? Like the, the, the benefits that we get from actually allowing ourselves to change direction, right? This is a huge part of life is nothing goes according to plan. So that's the same with your sugar. And I know so many people out there preaching, just be rigid, just make it 90 days and never have sugar again. And I don't believe that's actually serving us. I actually believe energetically we need and desire flow. We need and desire flexibility, freedom, sovereignty. And that also applies with food. No, I'm not telling you to go and eat sugar every day. Absolutely not. But I am telling you that there is a way to do the deep inner healing that's absolutely needed and is at the root of your addictions, Uh, usually trauma, early childhood stuff. This is all the, the somatic work that I've started doing with my clients to really shift the foundation of why we're in these addictive patterns with sugar. Obviously, getting off of it is an important piece for a for a while to clean up the brain and the cells. But outside of that, can we allow in some flow? Can we allow in some flexibility? And this just showed up at the retreat a couple weeks ago, which for me, and and this is part of why I wanted to record this episode, was a huge celebration for me. Because I, as the retreat leader and hostess, really felt in my flow. We had a plan, we had a meal plan, we had a schedule every day, and every single day, We went off plan in some sort of really easeful and beautiful way that supported all of us. So for example, one of the days we had scheduled to eat early and then go for a nature walk. But by the time that came around, nobody was hungry and everybody wanted to go for a nature walk first. So we swapped those around. And what that meant was we actually went completely against the intermittent fasting plan that I had put together as we were sugar detoxing for the week, the week together. And that was okay. So we didn't get the, the long 16-hour intermittent fast that I had planned and we had hoped for. 
that day. And it didn't matter because that rigidity of, no, I must force this. I must, uh, you know, make this happen when all of us actually needed something different in that moment. So it's all, you know, can we honor what our bodies need? Not that, the, not when they're craving that they need sugar. That's not what I'm talking about here, right? That's not necessarily a true need, but a true need of, I don't actually going to force myself to eat right now when I'm not hungry. And I'm going to go for this walk first instead and just be a bit flexible on the number of hours that I'm going to intermittent fast tonight, right? So we had these plans and this is just one example, but every day there was some way in which we really allowed ourselves to to talk about what we needed and as women really step into this beautiful feminine flow. There was another morning where uh, some of the women beautifully spoke their truth, right? That went completely against what we had planned to do that morning and said, you know what? I would really love to have the morning off to go kayaking and paddleboarding, which was one of the offerings that we had at this beautiful uh, oceanfront property. They had a five different water toys that we could all play on, which was so much fun. And we did that. We said, okay, the, the group here actually needs that. We need a morning off to, to not do our morning routine that we had sort of set in the schedule. And instead, we effortlessly just shifted the schedule, right? Shifted into what we actually needed as a collective and didn't bat an eye at it. It felt so smooth. And the reason I'm celebrating that is because the old me, the past me would have absolutely been freaking out that things weren't going according to schedule. I would have been trying to control like, no, no, we can't go off schedule. I would have been trying to like fit that in at some other time. If that's something that people needed, I would have absolutely been unable to cancel workshops, right. Or skip things that like that morning routine. No, no, we need this. It's on the schedule. And I'm really proud of how effortless it felt to actually shift and to really be in that feminine energy of, of honoring what it was we needed. And that to me is where true freedom and peace come from. And my curiosity is how can we allow that more with food, right? And, and not in a way that we're damaging our health, right? That's a fine line, right? Of not using this as an excuse to, well, Danny said I can eat whenever I want and whatever I want. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm just wondering if our rigidity around our meal plans and our strict eating plan and counting calories, which hopefully none of you are doing anymore. We're going to have to have another talk about that here on the show. Um, but really the rigidity and is there room for, for, for some flexibility? Because what I've noticed, right, when we're rigid, and I'm curious if any of you can relate to this, right, say with a meal plan, right, and we accidentally eat something off our meal plan. It is this huge open opportunity for our subconscious and our ego to beat ourselves up. The negative self-talk and self-hatred that comes when we go off plan. And I know because I've been there, right? Like, oh my gosh, I'm so horrible. I said I was going to intermittent fast last night, but I had a snack at eight o'clock and I am the worst person in the world. I'm such a failure. Why do I even bother? Forget it, right? And then we just give up because we're so down on ourselves. So what if we weren't at war? with food and with our bodies anymore. And we actually loved and honored ourselves enough to allow those moments to flow and allow the growth and learning to come from those moments if they weren't maybe in alignment with our goals. So I, we've kind of skirted around this topic of control, but that's where I want to go next here because this is all tied in, right? Our need to control is actually a coping mechanism. And there's a lot of ways or a lot of places that this can stem from for each of us. So where it came from for me is, is not the same for you, but I know a big part of my journey here in understanding that I was too much in my masculine was starting to notice where I was unwilling to let go of control, right? Where I was holding on so tightly to a travel itinerary or a, a, schedule for my day. And when things didn't happen as they would, right. Or I didn't get everything done on my to-do list for the day, I would just completely fall apart. And I would be so stressed and so overwhelmed and down on myself. And I started really seeing this as such a huge, huge root of my anxiety, my worry, my constant nervous system stimulation, and my binge eating and my emotional eating and my need to cope and escape with food. So this need for control, okay, is a, probably a whole nother episode on its own. 
But this is a coping mechanism. I think it's really important for each of you to understand and maybe to think back to your childhood. What could feeling a sense of control with maybe it's with food, maybe it's with your work or your relationships or friendships, right? Or, or like me, when you're traveling and you've got a schedule, right? Where would that ha- need for control have supported you? And what did it help you avoid? So for me personally, it was to help me feel a sense of safety. There was a lot of energetic instability and, and lack of safety for me in my childhood. And a lot of fear around that. Safety is one of our biggest core wounds, right? Not feeling safe, whether it's in our body or in our physical surroundings, or even just energetically and emotionally to be expressed, not feeling safe to be yourself. Uh, All of these things are patterns that we all carry in some sort of way. And one of the things that I, my subconscious developed was separation anxiety, right? Which helped me get the love and attention that I needed from my mom. And this need for control, right? Combined with the patriarchy, right? Teaching me that straight A's were good and I could be a good girl and be good at sports and do all these things. I would begin trying to control situations and friendships and environments so that I felt this false sense of safety, right? If I'm in control of a situation, right? Or I know in my mind, how something's going to play out, right? I would even work my way into, okay, I'm going to go to this person's house. We're going to have dinner. Then we're going to go to sleep. I'm going to have a sleepover and then we're going to play, right? I would like walk that all out in terms of like a schedule of what was going to happen as a subconscious tool to make me feel safe because I had a core wound where I didn't feel safe. So this is where my need for control really came on. It was, it's not okay to feel emotional. It's not okay to be in my feminine energy. I'm going to attempt to be really good at a lot of things, get straight A's and be in this false sense of control. And as I grew up and got older, I realized very quickly that control is an illusion. And if you haven't realized that yet, I invite you to take a look around at your life and realize the truth that we have no control. And that can be really scary, especially if you also have a safety wound, a core wound around safety, which most of us do, but it's also more than okay to understand that we can let go of control. And I know I shared this also when I've shared about uh, my experience and my work with psychedelic therapy, you know, my first experience took me about four years to be willing to do because I was so afraid of letting go of control. I was someone who never drank too much. I was never, never someone who did a lot of drugs. I didn't want to lose control in my body. It felt very unsafe to not be fully alert and aware. And again, that's my safety wound speaking up and my lack of trust Um, And I'm so glad that I worked through that. I went into that first medicine ceremony to actually work on what it felt like to be safe and to let go of control. And it made massive shifts for me. That was a huge turning point for me about four or five years ago now um, when I did my first ceremony and really shifted my awareness and understanding of control and of how it wasn't serving me and how I didn't need to pretend to have control over things in order to feel safe. And there's a lot there, but I just want to mention that as any of you listening who can relate to this, this control piece really taking over your life. And if you're starting to notice that trying to control things is actually dramatically uh, affecting your relationships, your work and your mental and physical health, you can do something about it. And what you can do about it is to begin leaning into trust and safety. So I know I've talked here on the show, we've had lots of episodes in the past, you can scroll back around trust and around learning to trust your body and learning to trust yourself. So if we ever want to actually start separating from this subconscious pattern of needing control, we first need to start feeling safe in our bodies and we need to be able to trust our bodies. Those go hand in hand. And most of us don't. We have, again, in this patriarchal society, been very taught to not trust our bodies because trusting our body and being in tune with our body is a very feminine energy. It's a very, connect, you're connected to your emotions, connect to the sensations in your body, connected to your intuition. These are absolutely deeply feminine energy traits and something that we all have innately within us and just need to pay some attention to in order for it to, to blossom. So trust is huge. 
And when we think about that, we can even think about it within relationships, right? That if you don't trust or feel safe in a relationship, you're probably going to try to control that other person or situations in some sort of way. And you may be doing this right now and that's okay. I think hopefully this episode is just opening your eyes to what's going on here underneath the surface for you and what is probably going on underneath the surface around your binging, craving, addictive patterns with sugar. So trusting is not just in yourself, but trusting also in something higher. This has been a huge part of my journey is my spiritual journey. Now, I'm not here to preach religions or what you need to believe in. I think we all uh, have to be on that path for ourselves and whatever it is that you choose to believe in. I think I didn't grow up with any sort of higher power belief system. And it was something that I developed in tandem with my healing journey with food and self. And as I've developed my spiritual beliefs and my spiritual connection and my understanding of something bigger than me, that has really allowed me to feel safer and to feel like I can trust that the universe has a plan for me, right? And that when situations arise, it's part of my soul's journey. It's part of my growth. And when things don't go according to plan, that's okay. Maybe the universe has something better in store for me. So that belief system of something higher, whatever that is for you, wonderful, I think is a really important piece of being a human and a really important piece of whether or not that actually exists, if there's something higher or not, it doesn't matter. But if we can cultivate a belief that there is, it can help us in so many ways, right? Really take a lot of stress, a lot of fear, a lot of worry. And a lot of these things can start to alleviate when we trust that there's a bigger purpose, right? Or we trust that there's something more happening here that we're just not aware of. So that's one part of the trust is trusting in something bigger than you, right? Or something higher than you, whatever that is. And then of course we have trusting yourself, which we have not learned how to do. We've actually been taught the opposite. We've been taught to trust everyone and everything except ourselves, right? The government, the doctors, the food industry, the commercials, the, the, the people in white lab coats, right? Our teachers, our parents, everyone knows what's best for us except us. And that is so wrong. It's so wrong. So learning how to retrust ourselves is a journey. This is something that I work a lot with my clients on is relearning how to tune into our body, lear learning to tune in to our intuition and our truth and our higher selves, right? And our higher wisdom that we all have access to. And these are some of the areas that we need to start developing trust. If we ever want to let go of control and begin shifting out of our masculine energy and into this beautiful ease flow. And for me, the more I shift in these energetic ways and find my balance, there, there are days when I need to be in my masculine. I need to get shit done. And there are days when I just hang around all day and I get to go in the garden. I go for a walk with a friend. I get to cook and I have no plans. And finding that flow for me is especially connected to my, my menstrual cycle um, when I can kind of flow through that. And that's something that I'm currently working on. Um, but for all of us, it ebbs and flows. And there are times when we're more in our masculine and more in our feminine. Um, we're never going to get to a point where we're perfectly balanced in every given moment. Um, and that's okay. But it's noticing overall in your week, in your days, in your months, are you able to have space for both of these energies that exist in you and that need you? So I want to share here. I know I've, I've shared a lot. This is a big discussion. I wanted to just start the ball here rolling to plant some seeds for all of you. And I want to wrap up this episode with some action steps, right? So you're like, okay, Danny, this is great. I understand that I'm probably hanging out too, too much in my masculine energy, trying to control everything, trying to keep myself safe, right? Which is absolutely a, a need that we have but I want to be more in flow and in ease and I want to not take things so seriously, right? This is a big piece of feedback that I get from a lot of my clients, right? Is everything's become so serious in life, right? And somebody breaks a bowl. Actually, Ben broke a bowl the other day and I didn't even bat an eye. Um, I actually should have laughed about it and brought the lightness in because it's just a bowl. The old me would have freaked out, Right? So these little things where we're like on edge and we're burnt out and we're exhausted are just not working anymore. So what can you do, right? How can you start practicing strengthening your, your feminine energy muscle, we'll call it, because that's what it's been like for me is actually having to be intentional about 
practicing that energy and being in that energy as much as I can. So some things that I want to leave you with, with action items are getting creative more often. So what can you do to be creative? And that might be cooking without a recipe. It might be dancing. It might be taking a pottery class. It might be coloring. It might be playing. I think like the feminine energy and play are very, very intertwined and being just being more in your flow energy. Another one here is to build in, and I know this is going to be the hardest one for some of you, build in more space in your weeks and in your days to flow. Build, like actually, and I had to do this in the beginning, booking off time to do nothing, like flow time, where you don't have a to-do list, you don't have a schedule, right? And you can just actually just do what you want to do, right? And you can tune in with, what do I want to do in this moment? What feels right? What, what would be nourishing for me right now, right? So being in tune with that, sense of flow, but you first must have create the space for it. Because if your days are booked solid, you're never going to flow, right? You don't have time to flow because you're too busy being structured. So we need to start building that in. And maybe to start, it's an hour a week, right? And then you can build up to a day every week, right? Or two days every week, right? And in theory, our weekends should be flow days, right? If you, if you still work and, and have a Monday to Friday job, right? weekends are for that, but they haven't. They've become equally as structured and scheduled, right? And we just don't have that break and that pause anymore. Planning less. So that kind of goes hand in hand with exactly what I mentioned, right? Allowing yourself to plan less. And I know there's a big, big desire for for many of you. We actually talked about this on the retreat integration call yesterday of planning your life so busy and so full that you don't actually have to spend time with yourself. And I know that's really scary for a lot of people because being in downtime means that you're alone with your thoughts and you're actually alone with your emotions. And our subconscious thinks that that's painful, right? And thinks there's a lot of fears around doing that and walking into that connection with yourself and the emotions that need to be felt and, and validated. So just know that that's, a part of the journey is learning to do less and be okay being with yourself is, is terrifying for some of you. And that's okay. So you, you don't have to jump into the deep end. You can start doing this slowly and highly recommend obviously being in a community or working with someone who can support you in navigating any of the fears that are coming up there. And as you plan less, you can also start inviting in the beautiful word, my favorite word, no, <laughs> no, 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 no allowing yourself to say no more often, right? Really tuning in and allowing yourself, giving yourself permission to say no to things that you don't actually want to do. So many times we say yes as women to everything because we think we have to. Yes, I'll help that friend move. Yes, I'll do this for you. Yes, I'll cook dinner every day this week when maybe that's not what we need. And every time we do that, we actually damage our ability to trust and love ourselves because we're not honoring what we really need. So we're, we're giving away our power every time we say yes to something that we actually mean no to. So I really want all of you to start practicing. If you haven't already the power of no, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. I am here advocating for that and cheering you on. If you need a cheerleader, it's me. I absolutely love it when other women honor what they truly need. And I welcome no's. I welcome when I ask somebody to help me with something and they just say no, I celebrate that because that's fantastic. I'll figure it out some other way. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm capable of that. So just remember that. Practice the no. And then, of course, the last action item here and piece is to really start the journey or continue your journey. I know many of you have started this if you've been listening to this podcast for a while. Uh, We've had a lot of these conversations, but begin listening to your body. This is, was a huge, huge piece of what we did at the sugar freedom embodiment retreat and really allowing ourselves to get out of our heads and learn to listen to the wisdom of our body and not only listen to it, whether that's your intuition or it's physical pain showing up in your body, but honoring what it needs. So if you're exhausted today, are you going to cancel your plans, your dinner plans tonight, go to bed early, rest, or are you going to push through, right? So we do this and I know you're all doing this in some shape or form. So this practice of learning to actually tune back into your body and learn that it's safe to be in your body. This is a big wound for all of us ladies and then honor what it actually needs 
this is somatic work in my opinion. This is, this is what somatic therapists do. This is, this is what I am now doing with my clients as a somatic embodiment coach is allowing us to repair our relationship with our bodies, understanding that that is where all the healing happens and to get out of the head, which is very masculine, right? When we're in our head, we're in our masculine energy. When we're like analyzing things and thinking things through, that's masculine. And if we can get more into our bodies, we actually start allowing that balance of the feminine and building trust with ourselves. When we really start to listen to ourselves, our truth, not someone else's truth, we get to be more connected with our authentic self and feel more alive and aligned and, and happy. And that's what I want for all of you, all of us. So I hope that this was helpful. I hope that this really planted some seeds for all of you to at least get started in understanding where you might be out of balance, out of alignment, and possibly starting to reflect on where your need for control has come from, right? And how that was serving you in the past and maybe how it's no longer serving you, especially in the realm of your habits and patterns with food. So loved having this conversation. We're going to have to have way more of these here on the show. Please reach out. Let me know what your biggest takeaway was from this episode. I absolutely love hearing from all of you. And I'm so, so grateful that you tuned in to another episode. I have many more exciting, incredible interviews coming up soon that I know you're all going to love. And I cannot wait to see you on the next episode. Bye everyone. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. If you're loving what we talked about today, please remember to subscribe, leave a review and share this episode with someone you love. And if you're ready to dive deeper into discovering your root causes and patterns that are keeping you hooked on sugar, be sure to check out our brand new free workshop series that will help you kick emotional eating for good. Find the link to download this free series and other amazing resources in the show notes below.